with those running for office, both local and statewide, and uh, for uh, a couple of, uh, of these races, we've managed to get both folks in in time here. So, But uh, for others, uh, it's, it's uh, come a little bit later on in the process. Teresa Torreseva is another one of those candidates running for office. She joins us via telephone right now. Teresa is an attorney out of the Charleston area, correct, Teresa? <laughs> Oh, no. Wheeling. I'm in the other panhandle. Wheeling. I'm <laughs> sorry. Very good. You're running for... Oh, no, no. It's okay. That's a fun uh, That's a fun jab, right? Because each area of the state um, has such a strong identity, um, including uh, the panhandle identity. So, great to be with you. My apologies. Uh, you're running for Attorney General and on the yeah. Democratic ticket side of things. And I'll ask you the first question out of the box here uh, is uh, give us the, the one-minute stump speech about why who Teresa Torreseva is and why folks should vote for her. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for, um, I love data, and I really enjoyed the segment you just had uh, with all the vote totals for Berkeley County. Um, the reason is I'm, I'm a courtroom lawyer. I've been a courtroom lawyer for 30 years representing people in West Virginia households, uh, small businesses. Uh, I am a Democrat. I'm the first vice chair of the, of the Democratic Party. And people often ask me, well, if you're a Democrat in West Virginia, why run? And the answer is because we are so completely imbalanced with essentially 90 percent of our government being Republican and also about that same number being uh, all three factors, Republican, um, male, and also not a person of color. So we have no representation in our state government of what the electorate actually looks like. And uh, more importantly, uh, only 40 percent of registered voters are Republican, 30 percent are Democrat, and about 25 percent are independent. West Virginians are fiercely independent, and we need balance in our government. And, and the, the real reason to vote for me is I'm qualified to do the job, and I'm ready to bring that balance. Uh, my work is generally public and in the press a lot because I represent public employee unions uh, who are paid by taxpayer money. So it's therefore in the press a lot when we have courtroom cases. And so my work is well known. And I'll be the kind of attorney general I've been in my law practice at Torres Save a Law here in Wheeling. Um, and I've been practicing for 30 years since I got out at WVU Law School in 1995. So I've seen a few courtrooms. Um, and, uh, and that's really um, what I think West Virginia needs in an attorney general, someone who has seen a few courtrooms. Very good. Thank you, Teresa. Can you tell us, uh, in talking with some of the other candidates who are Democrats running for statewide office, they've uh, told us that raising money can be a challenge as a Democrat in West Virginia, and the Democratic National Party hasn't been very generous with funds in terms of helping races in West Virginia uh, either, almost writing off the state. Can you tell me what your experience has been? So, so it has been a challenging environment because this perception that West Virginia is deep red and only red. And if you look at our elected officials, of course, 90 percent are Republican. But if you look at our electorate, including the fact that one in four are no party because they've sort of had it with both, <laughs> um, right? Um, independents are fiercely independent, and that number is growing and growing every time you look at the Secretary of State's numbers. Um, so I think what is happening is a perception problem, which West Virginia has all too often, and we certainly have it in politics. And what we need is to find our way back to balance in our government. Uh, we've never really, I mean, you know, when we were completely Democrat, uh, quote unquote, blue as a state, um, we had, you know, uh, you know, names for people that were Democrat in name only. And now we have names for people that are Republican in name only. And um, I think we what we really are in West Virginia is independent. But right now we're perceived as deeply, deeply red and and, and hopelessly imbalanced, I think. Um, and we're not. Um, I can tell you the Democratic Party is very, very energized uh, statewide in a way that has energized me as a candidate. Um, and so we've also found unique ways to connect with voters and get back to grassroots campaigning. So I'm doing, for example, um, uh, uh, I'm doing twice a week a live video lunchtime show about the race, and it's picked up a lot of followers and interests. And you just have to find those unique ways to reach directly to voters, including um, being on your show today, which is a great opportunity to talk to people in the Eastern Panhandle. So um, campaigning has been this nonstop frenetic work um, of reaching voters um, and doing it a little differently than buying it through the media. 
it huh. has been tough. Yes, that was a long answer to your question. That's okay. But yes, you are. It is. That is exactly what's happening. And Democratic candidates that you see out there working hard, anyhow, are really overcoming uh, those obstacles, which is where there really is a lot of energy. So the Democratic Party is looking forward, while there's been a lot of. Uh, sort of mess behind um the, you know the party and the energy is looking forward i have another attorney in the room matt harvey who's the jefferson county prosecuting attorney you two may indeed even know each other matt we do we, we do. do good morning Teresa. how are you very good i love you know I, i'm biased but i always love hearing from other lawyers <laughs> <laughs> you're a, that makes you a sicko i think <laughs> <laughs> that is not true I'm, I'm biased i'm biased i'm, I'm kidding I think more are great it's great to have one in the room <laughs> what um what goals would you have for the office of attorney general yeah that's a you know that's an important question because a lot of people sort of say well how does this office even affect me like why does this even matter and um the answer is uh first goal that i would have is to um, bring it all inward so i think we have the attorney general's office being used on this national scale for people to rise up politically and i think that the attorney needs to be the attorney for the state and for the people so i would aggressively investigate allegations of violations of the law. Um, and, and, you know, I'm someone that supports um, the attorney general. Um, I, I don't think the attorney general needs criminal prosecution authority because it's well handled in our counties. Uh, but you w have to work closely with the county prosecutors in order to investigate what may be a civil violation, what may be a criminal violation, what may be both. So one of the grand sort of sweeping powers of the attorney general is the ability to investigate all violations of law and to assist and coordinate other agencies. I would, I would focus heavily on that. And that, of course, avoids litigation, helps solve problems. Often you think there's a violation of law and it's not what it appears to be. Um, so you have, you have that. I would also, I would be very aggressive in the courtroom. I believe in access to the courts by people and um, small businesses. I don't think it's just the playground for the rich and famous, even though it seems to be to some of us. And I would be very aggressive in opening the courts and bringing cases um, that both both in coordination, I mean, if there's private litigation that's already happening, but also for the, all those cases where only the attorney general can prosecute or bring civil claims. And I would also focus on communicating um, heavily with the public about the role of the office, the role of the attorney general, and the importance of access to the courts in order to keep it all fair and balanced. Uh, so I have given that question a lot of thought, Matt. Thank you for that. So if it's a, if it's a three-word uh, summary, I would investigate, litigate, and communicate. All three of those things would be my main focuses as the attorney general of West Virginia. Uh, currently, the attorney general, Patrick Morrissey, has some coalitions built with other states uh, on some national issues that he's filed in federal that has been filed in federal court would you continue with those or or would you discontinue them many of them no I would I would not you know I would not sweep my hand and discontinue them all or continue them all but I would certainly look at each one I can tell you that it's my sense and it's the public sense that the office is being used for political grandstanding and to gain political favor or public name recognition. And not just here, but frankly across the country, the Attorney General's office is often used as a stepping stone politically. And, and I don't see it that way. I, I've been an attorney for 30 years. I love being an attorney. I'm looking for 30 more. Um, and I love the job and actually doing, doing that work. Um, a lot of those cases, I'm, I'm certain that I would judge as not necessarily helpful to West Virginia or our economy or our consumers and maybe not even the role of the AG, and we would not pursue. I'm certainly not suggesting, however, that I wouldn't work with coalitions or other states. I do think that's important and can be very, very valuable. But you can get caught up in that too much, and you forget to protect inside uh, the borders of West Virginia, which is important because that's the extent of the Attorney General's authority. John Gilstrap. <clears throat> Teresa, this is John Gilstrap. Good morning. Um, hey, good morning. A, a couple minutes ago, when, we, when you're in your opening statement, that sounds very legal. Um, you kind of implied that the AG's office has been too white and too male um, in recent years. And I'm curious how that has manifested itself uh, in, in your view in terms of, I guess, the laws of, of West Virginia. I mean, but what, how, how have we failed? 
Well, so the, the the number one, and I think it's it's always the elephant in the room. The number one thing is that women are are now uh, we consider ourselves second class citizens if we live under a Trump abortion ban. It's as straight and simple as that. We do not have a voice. Women do not have a voice. It's as if the government came knocking on the doors for everybody's guns and wanted to go through their gun safe, which is, you know, the fear of so many or was. Well, they came for women. So this idea that our entire government that speaks for and ninety percent. You look at the legislature, you look at the Senate, you look at the governor, the secretary of state, the auditor, you look on down the line, the, the agriculture commissioner, and on and on and on, and, and, and many of them good people. And by the way, all the men shouldn't leave. We just need representative government. And so one big way that we see the government failing is is in taking away and severely limiting the rights of women to where our health is at risk, where the government is in our doctor's offices and telling us, you know, uh, to sit down. And, and so that's a huge way. But other ways are that there's simply no balance in everything that they want to do. So we saw when, when one party has a supermajority, we see gerrymandering. And um, that's what we've seen in West Virginia. And, and so now I'm some of this stuff, of course, I want to be clear. You know, when you run for office, you get asked about a lot of things, and I'm always happy to have a, a good discussion. For the attorney general, of course, the job of, of attorney general is to be an attorney in the courtrooms or to avoid litigation, to, to investigate that type of thing. Uh, but I do see um, that that if we, you know, for me, I'm an attorney, so if I'm going to run for office, it seems um, – People said, well, it's a good fit to be an attorney general because you're kind of already doing the stuff. Yes, we're doing all the stuff. Um, And and I don't mean to make light of it. It's important and incredible work. Um, But when you look at the government and, for example, my office, my office, uh, attorney general, has never, ever in the history of the state been held by a woman, ever. And that's stunning to me as a female attorney that graduated from WVU in 1995 and I've been, you know, um, pulling down victories and sometimes getting my hat handed to me in courtrooms all across the state for 30 years. And, and, you know, you just think never. And and so what is happening is women feel like our voices aren't being heard even more. And then we see laws that are just these severe, incredible bans. And we, by the way, we don't see uh, it it is understood that that is um, at least I think for most women, an attack on our fundamental freedom. Because if you're not, if, if you're not free to, to make decisions about your own body, are you, how can you be free about anything? How can you, and everybody else, by the way, in the society, meaning all male are free. So, um, so, and by the way, that debate would look very different if we put that issue to the voters, but our entirely Republican, entirely male legislature, nearly entirely male, no disrespect to the women that are there, uh, won't put it on the ballot because they're afraid. They're afraid because everywhere that choice has been on the ballot, even in deep red states that are just like West Virginia, people choose choice. People choose freedom over government intrusion, and that's what women want. So it's such a deep question when you ask, how has the government failed? There are other ways other than gender where the government has failed because it's simply Republican. So I'd love to see more Republican women involved to mix the gender balance. But the truth is we need more party balance as well. And and we need uh, to find ways for minority voices to be heard and to do things like what, uh, what what Vice President Kamala Harris said in her speech. We don't hate each other because of who we vote for or what we think politically. Um, and so um, more of that, please. Uh, and I just I don't think you see that when you don't have the balance in government. So there's so many ways. Um, and I'll, I'll stop now because I'm on the phone, and you all probably on the studio go, well, we have more questions. Well, actually, I, I, a, I love that question. Thank you for asking. I actually have the same question again because what <clears throat> you you kind of gave a, a, a party speech, and I wanted to know how the AG's office, the the abortion thing, and all that. That's those are all legislative decisions that the AG really yeah, doesn't have absolutely. anything to do with. So, but we're talking about putting a uh, that that the AG's office has been. Uh, too white and too male. And so how has the AG's office failed and what would, and how would, what would have been different if the AG's office had not been white and male? 
Yes, great. Uh, I, I got I got your your clarification and great point. And you're right about the party speech. And I am vice chair of the party, um, and I, I go back and forth from that. So, um, but to your specific point, um, one of the ways, for example, is that women lawyers are are different in the way we operate, much the way women doctors are different in the way we operate. And I think that the that the attorney general's office needs a substantially increased outreach to consumers, clients, small businesses, people all over the state from the eastern panhandle to the northern panhandle to the southern coal fields, uh, to, uh, from east to west, and, and more involvement with the actual people that are supposed to be being represented. And that, for example, is one of the th- ways that I think would be very different. Uh, but generally speaking, it's representation in government. Um, so there are so many ways that if you don't even have a seat at the table and you're not even in the room, you can't even address the ways that gender matters. But I want to be clear that most of the work of the attorney, gender, of the attorney general, gender doesn't matter. Um, I certainly understand that, and I certainly also understand, um, as you pointed out quite quite effectively, that there are issues that, that are not for the attorney general's job uh, to do. But, but, of course, we see a lot of that, don't we, um, on, on lots of other issues for the, for, for the, uh, for the Republican side, uh, energy issues and other issues the attorney general is filing political cases on. Um, so the, the main way is representation. The main way is that there will be another uh, woman who wants to run. By the way, I haven't been able to find a female who has run for the position and, or excuse me, who has um, secured the party's nomination. Uh, uh, and so that's an interesting fact for me, which means more women simply need to run um, and that that's not necessarily, well, if it's fault-based, it's, it's our fault. Let's step up and run. Um, another reason why I um, decided to do that. So it's, it's a lot of it is about representation in government and what people see um, in all areas. You know, that last sentence right there, Teresa, is part of the equation. You can't vote for a woman if a woman's not running for the office. If the only people running for the office are white males, Democrats and Republicans, then whether it's a Democrat or Republican, you're voting for a white male. What's the old saying? People get the, the government that they deserve. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 you said it. Sometimes you hear these numbers and you think, well, that I'm mad at white men. And, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Have the women stepped up to run for this office? Well, no. Well, darn it. I'm not mad at the white men then. And so it's, uh, you know, it, it's easy to joke about, but it's a very serious conversation. And it's important, I think, that we see that um, as voters. A lot of people are shocked just to hear how dramatically one party our government is, how dramatically Republican. And I say this with, with, with all due respect to any party, make it a D, make it either party that, you know, at 90 percent control. And it, it shocks, I think, most voters, even Republicans, because we really do get this idea of checks and balances um, and minority voice mattering to at least balance things out and that type of thing. Um, now, um, and I can't remember who made it now, but someone made a good point. I do think the attorney general has a lane that they need to drive in and stay in. And the reason is because I think the job is really important and can do a lot of good for West Virginians if if it's less political and more the job of, you know, the state's chief law enforcement officer for all civil matters. You know, that is how it should be looked at. Teresa, I have 60 seconds there. Yours, tell the folks listening here in the Eastern Panhandle why they should vote for you. I will, as your attorney general, keep doing what I'm doing uh, as a private attorney. You should vote for me because we need an attorney general with courtroom experience. And and we need someone who understands the problems uh, that exist far from Charleston as well as in Charleston. uh, And I understand both. And um, most of all, I really just want to say it's been a real pleasure being on today, uh, getting the questions from all of you and listening to the show before. Uh, Great service you're doing, giving giving everyone the numbers and the information. Uh, And remember, Teresa Torresaver for Attorney General. Uh, Let's make history, folks. Teresa, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck to you on Election Day. Thanks, everyone in the room. Sorry I couldn't be with you in person. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care.